Mr. Barth Gimble. Tonight, Barth's guest will be Mr. William W.D. Bud Prize, whose friend made a big goat. The Reverend He, whose church is making noise with our boys. And Happy Kind and the Mirth Makers. Happy. Thank you so much. Good evening and welcome once again to Firma tonight. I'm Barth Gimble and we've got a show chock full of show for you tonight. <laughs> so I don't want to take a lot of time here at the beginning, but we are instantly getting a good response to our announcement of our bus tour with the whole Firmwood Tonight gang that I announced the other night. As a matter of fact, the people at Cross Country Bus Lines right here in Firmwood just uh, confirmed our telephone reservation of the bus today, and so we do have the vehicle, and that's good news to start out. Um, now we need the destination. Where would you like to go with Happy, Jerry, and me? We'll take that clean, burning, diesel-fueled mother anywhere in there. <laughs> so send in your reservations with that non-refundable $50 deposit and, <laughs> and be sure to include your vote on where the tour should go. It's up to you. Incidentally, to Dan Cleary at Stop and Go, uh, Stop and Go Liquors, that's what it's called, where they have cold beer and free matches. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Dan, for that case. And you're absolutely right. When it is that old, it does taste good straight. But... <laughs> Under federal laws, I am not allowed to accept it in lieu of the $50. I'm sorry. You know you know how, how strictly they regulate buses, uh, Dan? That's the way it is. But thanks. Just the same. Okay. Oh, Jerry Hubbard. So, uh, Hello, Jerry. Good luck with that bus tour. I think we're all, there's a lot of talk about it in Fernwood. Absolutely. And, uh, speaking of buses, I don't know if we have time to tell you. You take the joke. bus to work every day. Yes, I do. And as I said before, I sit in that seat just right up behind the, the driver there. And uh, to the, tonight, the, the driver told me a, a little story coming over, a little joke. See if you can figure this out. My parents had a child. It, it's not my brother, and it's not my sister. Who is it? <laughs> Your mom? Your mom? It's your joke, Chad. I think I know the answer, but go ahead. Bob Felker. <laughs> He's the driver, the bus driver. He's the one who told me the story. That's the, the, <laughs> I'm sorry. I think I know it. It's I'm not my sister. I'm not my brother. Mm -hmm. But still, I'm the child of my father and my mother. Yeah. Who am I? Uh -huh. no, it's me. No, I think it's Bob Felker. That's the way he told me. Anyway, the, the point is these bus drivers have such a great sense of humor that I hope um, that although I'll be sitting in the rear of the bus, I can come down and kind of rap with whoever is driving the That's bus. That's right. That's a good idea. Jerry and Bob there. asked me to put in a good word for him. He'd like to take that trip, too. He would? Yes. As a driver? Oh, or yes. No, as a driver. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Well, maybe he could keep us amused with those jokes yes. all the way. <laughs> I hope we don't go any farther than Akron. With this <laughs> You know, ever since Firma Tonight started, Happy Kind, the Mirthmakers, our wonderful band, have been getting a lot, a lot of letters from teenagers who are interested in music. They want to know how a group like the Mirthmakers gets started, and, and some of them want to know why. Um, <laughs> we, we thought the best way to answer some of those questions would be to just go right to the horse's mouth itself, go right to our, to our director over here. So let's go talk to the leader of the Mirthmakers, Mr. Happy Kind. Let's go. <laughs> make a guy feel at home. That's great. First of all, Happy, uh, can the boys in the band read music? That's something we're asked all the time. Well, <laughs> some of them can't read anything. But uh, well, we've got a world of experience in this group right here. I'll bet you that with just this group of guys here, we've got about 300 years of experience. Is that right? Yeah, and I average it all out, of course. Yeah. Know. But anyway, <laughs> it's a wonderful experience they've had. You know, for example, these guys are all from big bands. You know, really? big, big band days. This is, this is Eddie, the bass player. Ed and you know, he was playing with the musical magpies, and we got them out of Cleveland. He sure. came right with us. They used to play the sportsman show up there all the time, when they, and, the, and the house and garden show. Do you remember him? Yeah. Well, anyway, when we, when we're going to get together an arrangement, I, I want to do this for these young people that are coming up. They, they respect an, an older adult, you know. Sure they do. Somebody 40, 42, they, they really think they're something. So they anyway, must really respect you, Happy. They didn't say that again. Yeah. They must really respect uh, you, Happy. 
That's a musician's phrase that I used. Oh, I see. But anyway, so what we do is we end up in my house at some evening, and then we, we uh, go out in my garage. It's, uh, some, if it isn't warm, we just start the car and let it run in there. Sure. But anyway, we sit around, we have a few beers, you know, and listen to some Guy Lombardo records for inspiration or something to get the guys in there. And then I get the feeling it, you know, and so all of a sudden you'll hear boom, 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 boom. It's That'd my be... wife walking around. Oh, I see. Still married to her? Yeah, same way. She's quite old now. By the way, uh, and then we so Eddie, the bass player, will pick up that boom, boom. That would be the boom, boom, boom. boom. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, that's great. Doesn't that get it? I might have some song. I can't remember what it was. <laughs> and how many letters? Uh, never mind. Uh, but anyway, so then we add the drums, and uh, Colin uh, Bursky, you know, our drummer, will start something like this. Kind of gets you right away, doesn't sure. it? Sure. And then, you know, I've got one of those song books, and... Uh, uh, of course, Tommy, Big Tommy, he isn't here tonight, but... Well, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, it's his parole officer, you know. Yeah, that's great. Now, this isn't his parole officer. You were his roommate in prison, right? No, no, it wasn't. Was it arson? Yeah. It was arson. That's great. He's really burning fingers, too. I guess that's what I'm going to say. Nice arson and larceny. Yeah, you know, that's good. But anyway, Big Tommy came to us directly from uh, prison. The Slammer, right. That's right, from the Slammer. And, uh, of course, he was in there on a bum rap. He rapped some bum in the head. You know? <laughs> Again, you guys have to joke that way. That's, that's right. That's great. But anyway, so then I have this song from the 50s, and I pick out one of those real good 50s songs, one of the big hits, sung by like the Show No Nose or something. Shana Nah. It's an A instead of the O. Well, I always did have bowel trouble, you know. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, then I'll, I'll uh, then we end it. After we learn the thing, then we end with a chord like this, boys. We were just talking about that. I'd like to see more record pantomime from them, too. And a lot of the people in, in the audience have written in. But they not play at all, but just look like they're playing. Yes. That's some of the pop tunes of the day, which everyone loves. Well, we'll talk to half about sure. it. That's a possibility. My next guest is a familiar face and chin around town. He's, uh, you know who I'm talking about if I say chin. Maybe you don't. He's always thinking of new ways to put Fernwood on the map and vows to keep coming back until one of them works. I think that's good. <laughs> Please welcome Fermit's unofficial, and I can't stress that enough. He is totally unofficial. There's some controversy about that. He yeah, claims yeah, he's uh, been appointed by the mayor. A lot of people object to him using that. Well, the mayor's term. one of them. Yes. Yeah, yeah. the mayor hates that. <laughs> Please welcome Fermit's very unofficial ambassador at large, Mr. William W.D. Bud Prize. <laughs> Anything you want, so long as you don't call me late for supper. Right? Oh, that's right. You prefer being, it's William W. D. Bud Prize for William, uh, William, William Don Bud Prize, but you prefer Tom, right? Yeah, uh, Tom. Some of them calls me Tom. Some of them calls me Maury. <laughs> okay, we haven't called you Maury yet, so yeah. let's do that. Maury, uh, what do you have for us tonight? Well, you know, Cletus Emmett Wilhelker's back from his trip to way out deep, far out outer space. <laughs> they took him all to parts, you know, because uh, they wanted to take a peep at his brain. <laughs> Because he is so smart for a human being, they have never seen nothing like it. So what they've done was they took him off to parts, you know, they knows where all your nuts and bolts and screws to your human body is. And they <laughs> took him all to parts, you know, and they gave him only a local anesthetic. <laughs> so uh, here he is, he's laying on this one table, see, uh, all in different parts. And he sees them giving uh, his brain to once over on the other table. Because it was only a local and he could still... Yeah. That's right. So, um, so he's uh, he's uh, he's back now. Of course, I tell you, fabulous thing, unbelievable. Uh, what they done is they clowned him a leg. Now I don't know whether all of you know that Cletus M. Uh, Whitewalker is a one-legged man, has That's been right. since he's a small child. Well, he took that off himself, didn't he? Because he wanted to be a pirate so badly, he just. Well, I won't tell you. Something. That's right. Always wanted to be a pirate when he's a little boy. Parental permissiveness, that's a word, ain't it? Permissiveness? Sure. Can go so far 
But when a child wants to remove his leg because he wants to be a pirate, do not let him do it. He just said no to body removal. I think we'd have a happier bunch of kids. Absolutely. Hate you for it then, but as they grow older, they'll look back and say, thanks. Yeah. They had, Daddy had something in the old noodle. That's yeah, right. They may not know that until they're on their own two feet and know what they're doing. And of course, that's possible if they take them off when they're too late. Absolutely. Too late now. Of course, uh, you know, his eye, when that was put out, that was an accident. Uh, but he was, it was one of them uh, real nice accidents because he always wanted to wear a patch. You yeah, know. happy accident, right. So, uh, Incidentally, yeah. speaking of Cletus's work, I hate to say this, but is that chin, uh, is a chin yeah, that's going back. retainer for his overbite, uh, underbite rather, but... Uh, Cletus Hammond is also a chin I'm not sure it's going back, uh, Tom. It does. Look, I didn't want to say it, but it looks almost, uh, God forbid, it's protruding a little now, more. I think it's the angle from the... They, there must be some people that think it's funny when they does this, but it is not me. <laughs> I do not find this real amusing because we have got all of my progress of the chin uh, marked up on the garage door in chalk. Oh, you just... <laughs> and it is all, uh, it's all marked up there, plain to see, and that chin is going back. Eight years from now, I'm going to have the profile of a movie star. Well, <laughs> well, you've had it on now for how long? I've had it on now for about... Uh, Oh, it's been about two months. I got eight years more to eight go. Eight years more to go. Actually, <laughs> seven years and ten months. If you want to look at it, kind of from a happy viewpoint. Yeah, yeah, because that's just about. You mentioned time. Cletus. What is Cletus working on now, W. D. William Bud? Well, I've got something to talk about before I get to that. Because you know, I'm steaming. I am mad. My dandruff is really up on this. I have something to show you that I see. Well, I didn't see it in the paper, but fortunately, I have friends who is all over the world, you know. Have... Now, Ruby Louise Hannigan of the world-famous Hannigan Mule Troop, uh, she was in Los Angeles, California, and she's seen this in the Los Angeles Times. Can you see this thing? It says, it's a... It's a cat. Or maybe a rabbit. Or possibly a cabot. Now, this is this an article that is about these people that has got this animal, you see, that is half of a cat and half of a rabbit, see? Yeah. And they says that they found this animal in New Mexico. This is not their cabot, this is my cabunny. <laughs> At least some stalage is involved here, maybe some bunny napping. I don't know. But this this animal was breeded up by uh, for me by Cletus Emmett Whalewhacker and was given to me. This cabunny was given to me. I have I tell you, you know, steam starts coming out of here in a minute. I've sent these. Things work clearly if you're calm, believe me. Absolutely. Just sit back, relax. Oh, boy. <laughs> I feel like somebody pumped me up with a bicycle pump. Yeah. <laughs> I won't tell you. You're going to break your straps if you get Oh, no. Shoot one of those rubber bands. We could hurt someone oh, in the audience. Boy. So just kind of calm down. What would you make jokes about if it wasn't for me, huh? <laughs> anyway, let's get serious about this because this is a very serious subject. I sent these people a letter, a complete letter out to Los Angeles, California, about this stolen cabunny. I sent this letter out to them, uh, uh, or telling them that this is my stolen cabunny, and you know that I tell the gospel truth. That's right. uh, absolute gospel truth. Never stretch them. If you want fairy tales, go to Hans Christian and Amberson. Because you won't hear it from me. Now, I have, as of this reportage, I have not heard from these people, not one word. Well, in case the people out there do find this on the street or... I know it, where it is. No, they wait. got it. What, does it answer to any name of any sort? Is Spotty. It? Spotty. <laughs> Well, yeah, I do. Your dog's name is Spotty. I do have a dog named Spotty. I like Spotty. That's why I named my cabana Spotty. 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 No, she does not Well, he told me that. Now, don't look at me like you that. You told me that earlier. Don't tell you anything. Well, you know him. You well, it's Spotty on her birth certificate anyway. If she changes it later on, that's, that's one thing. Last name. Here's the Spotty. animal. Spotty. Here's Spotty. the animal. Here's the host. Here's the announcer. And here's who knows. We'll be right back. Stay with us.
make you happy. We're back uh, with William W.D. Bud Prize, or Tom or Maury, and Jerry Hubbard, <laughs> happy time in the orchestra. You know, recently over a hundred of our congressmen were accused of accepting bribes from the Korean government in return, of course, for favors. Uh, they're calling this scandal, incidentally, Korea Gate. Thought some people might know that. <laughs> the Koreans, of course, are calling it a big mis misunderstanding. Here, as a part of a national public relations tour in defense of his government, is the Reverend Chung Hee. <laughs> this couch isn't too high for you. <laughs> <laughs> Reverend Hee, let's not uh, beat around the bush. Um, have United States congressmen been receiving uh, Korean money? Uh, yes, they have, Mr. Gimba. But uh, these congressmen, uh, they have not received money from our government. They have received money from our church. The church. Okay, so you're saying that this is, is a religious situation that we have here and, and, and certainly not a bribe situation. Oh, there is no bribery involved okay. in any way. Good. Uh, these congressmen are, are merely our disciples. <laughs> they are devoted followers of our church. The Church of the Grand Acceptance. <laughs> Exactly what is uh, the Church of the Grand Acceptance? I've uh, not heard of it. This is, uh, this is the church that was founded on the precept that one can achieve inner serenity right. by accepting gifts and blessings of the church. <laughs> well, uh, this is a bit unusual. Usually you have a, a religion that, uh, that wants the people to give them money, you know, as opposed to this is... You're, you're giving the people money. Is that what you're saying? You're going to give it to them. Ah, uh, that's why those churches are roosting their frock. <laughs> well, I, I don't mean to give you any flack about your frock, as you put it, but uh, <laughs> what exactly is the nature of these blessings and, and, and gifts to the congressman? What uh, are they? These come in many forms, Mr. Gimba. Uh, you can call me Barth. Oh, uh, bye. Okay. Bye. Uh, what's down? Uh, of course, it's a hard cash. <laughs> and uh, sometimes it comes in the form of a condominium or an Eldorado. <laughs> oh, uh, after the congressmen receive these blessings from your church, uh, don't they have to have to do anything in return for the Korean government? Oh, no, no, no. We know nothing of your politics. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, government is your congressman's uh, business. Sure. If, of course, in their wisdom, uh, someone sees fit to see that a uh, Senate bill is passed to provide uh, military equipment, the church will not stop them. <laughs> yeah, I see. Uh, where does your church get the money for all of these blessings they're bestowing upon our elected officials, our congressmen? Back home in Korea, we pass a correction spread among our poor ancestry's frock. Okay, your frock. Uh, what would you say is your average contribution there? Oh, a dollar here, a dollar there, and 200 million big ones from the Korean government. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sounds a bit like uh, that laundered money to me, you know what I mean, Reverend? <laughs> they probably picked that up from the Chinese. <laughs> In by ten, solve it by four. Right. Well, it starts those bills, it's hard to fold them and put them in your pocket. Absolutely. <laughs> you don't have your ticky. <laughs> uh, Reverend He, you certainly do have a, I think, a fascinating religion here. And, and in fact, I think uh, I'd like to look into it further. I'm sure our government would like to look into it further as well. Having you here might turn out to be a, a blessing in disguise if you catch my drift. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> right on, Reverend. <laughs> we'll be right back after this word. Don't go away. never know until the band stops, and then I feel so bad about it. Uh, we only have time really to thank my wonderful guest tonight. First of all, the wonderful Reverend He, who had to run down to the State House and talk to some people about some important things. And, uh, <laughs> but what's, uh, what's this? I don't know. That, that might be some cabani fur. That was going to be my 
Uh, I don't do know. Though. It's that? a little bit too long. Do you save that stuff? Usually. Okay. You have probably a big ball of it at home. <laughs> this is how uh, you just joined us, so uh, we're we're ending. Uh, this is uh, the fun prize or Tom or Maury. He was our guest earlier as well. I want to thank you. For the just time. tuned in, boy. Did you miss it? Oh, we had a good time. <laughs> Jerry Hubbard is always here. Oh boy, happy kind of the orchestra. It's been a wonderful show, bud. Where are you going from here? Oh, I don't know. I guess I'm going to go home and take off my shoes and just put Those my feet up Those are pretty good-looking shoes you got there. That's a bunion. That's an Andy Bunyan shoe. <laughs> now, I want to tell you something. There is more people in insane asylums today because of unbearable pain in their feet than there is from your mental problems. <laughs> this is an Andy Bunyan shoe. It's a special-made shoe that has a, 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 a pad in there that pushes against where your bunion is. Well, it's great news. Maybe we can try to market them sometime. You know, I tell you something about this shirt. You know who? You know whose shirt this was original? Arthur Guthrie. It's an actual fact. This shirt was given by Arthur Guthrie to Tony Marvin. To Tony Marvin. You remember Arthur Guthrie on the, the fellow played the ukulele? Now he gave this to Tony Martin uh, Marvin. That day that he fired that Italian boy. We're almost out of time. Well, we are out of time. Good night. Show are Kenny Mars as Mr. William W.D. Bud Prize and Raymond Sison as Reverend Chung Hee. Press his car.